This is the part of the broadcast where I give you some of the personal news before I get into the actual news. But the reason why I'm feeling so happy today, I guess, is because it's a wonderful day. Beautiful day. I worked out. But most importantly, I had some news, some good news. Ladies and gentlemen, while I was working out earlier this morning, I heard about some information that uh, may shock you. Sparkles. I was so excited that I could not wait to go home and I uh, changed my title immediately. Conservative pundit, media personality, person most responsible for your grandparents getting brain cancer, a routine agitator of racial agitprop, a person who has said that the NAACP is responsible for riots, a person who hasn't uh, necessarily spoken too fondly of others when they have died, including Kurt Cobain, even, a person who's responsible for an entire boomer generation getting brainwashed by conservatism, the man, the myth, the legend, Rush Limbaugh, is dead, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Hips! 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 I'm not seeing enough movement! Imagine being pro-life and then dying. Devastating. You, you know, in the air, this maybe 2021 watch. will be and different than 2020. Who knows? Right uh, now, I am looking forward. Uh, you, you got Henry Kissinger. We got Dick Cheney. There are plenty of people that are uh, pure villains. I mean, pure villains through and through. We'll see. The other Koch brother is alive. If I were to make a cancer analogy, it's like um, it's like when people say, well, Hitler can't all be that all that bad. You know, after all, Hitler killed Hitler. And it's like, well, cancer is pretty fucking devastating and it's pretty bad but sometimes it stops further brain cancer from spreading by uh knocking out different forms of brain cancer and that is uh what happened here uh on this day For most of you, you you have no fucking clue like you literally have no fucking clue you do not know what rush limbaugh has done like you just don't understand it you just know him as like the the old guy who uh, fucking got like a like a medal for no reason from donald trump and like a bunch of boomers like myself were agitated by this and you're like who the fuck and i've used them before i've talked about him before like what he has done in Love radio him. broadcasting is something that i is something that i talk about as far as um as far as what i consider to be the style of content that i do i am very similar to rush limbaugh except not a fucking psychopath who routinely lies and uh, in the most ridiculous and the most obvious fucking ways but uh he is the uh, og uh conservative broadcaster like one of the og conservative broadcasters uh if you don't know who the fuck he is that means you you probably live in like that means you probably live in a more um liberal uh bubble you probably live in a city or something like that and you don't have a lot of conservative relatives like this guy's reach is is this guy's reach is impossible to comprehend like oh we'll we'll do the we'll do the famous rush quotes uh in a little bit like guys this dude is so quotable like a lot of the stuff that you hear nowadays from like the likes of ann coulter and stuff like this is just old school boomer conservatism boomer racism through and through let me put it to you this way the nfl all too often looks at a game between bloods and the crypts without any weapons there i said it old school old school shit like straight up like you know every black person is violent and a criminal and and a gangbanger you know that sort of thing like that, that's why like some of the things that rush limbaugh is famous for saying if i said now you'd be like what who fucking talks this way like you wouldn't even comprehend oh, it you'd be like lost, what wait, who? there's no it's like from a bygone era you know what i mean it's like old school racism the naacp quote that i was talking about which is um uh where where he's like the NAACP is famous, like, they're they're teaching people how to do riots over there. Like, that's like, you know, he might have said that in, like, the 90s or whatever. But that's like a 1964 era. That's like a 60s, 70s era racist remark. But he was doing that in the fucking 90s. Riot rehearsal. They should get a liquor store and practice robberies. Yeah, exactly. Like, that sort of thing, dude. Very, just excellent excellent forms of racism like shit that you hear from your grandpappy you know how you steal fucking quotes from me when you're talking to other people to make yourself seem smart like you're more knowledgeable about politics than you actually are that's what your fucking granddad did with rush limbaugh okay literally but for racism you will repeat some of the things you hear from me as like talking points to other people or to impress women or whatever the fuck you're doing that's what your grandfather was doing to impress the other races within his vicinity to be like no 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 you don't understand like my racism level is through the fucking roof like i the, the next level racism chart is what I got. That's what your granddad did. 
this is why I always say the conservative, like the Republican Party has always been Donald Trump and Donald Trump's always been the Republican Party because there is this like liberal understanding that there used to be like a regular Republican and Rush Limbaugh has been in operation for a very long time. Like not a, and he's a regular Republican. You know what I mean? Regular Republicans weren't like, oh, you know, I only like the free market, uh, you know, and uh, I would like to deregulate these uh, industries, these key industries and make sure we're no longer allowing people to have unions. No, like that's not regular conservatism. Regular conservatism is literally like Rush Limbaugh style, like all women are whores if they want to have sex uh, without marriage. Uh, also, I will be having sex outside of marriage a lot. But uh, if you do it as a woman, you're a fucking whore and you don't deserve contraception. Uh, you might actually get the death penalty. Like that's regular conservatism. It has always been regular conservatism. Old school conservatism is like, um, you know, consent is bullshit, stuff like that. You know, oh, what, what now? Like you, you want to ask for consent? What's next? Like, are you fucking kidding me? Am I going to... I can't even think of a fucking analogy because we've moved so far beyond that that even the analogy that I would give you would be something that literally is like already uh, unacceptable. So Miss Fluke and the rest of you feminazis, here's the deal. If we're gonna pay for your contraceptives and thus pay for you to have sex, we want something for it. And I'll tell you what it is. We want you to post the videos online so we can all watch. My man, dude, he's fucking insane. Okay. So you'll understand a little bit further why we are, um, you know, us older folk or people that have been paying attention to politics for some time are, um, you know, happy about this uh, recent development with uh, Rush Limbaugh dying. All right, let's watch uh, the the Wapo Compi over here. I bet that it's not going to have some of the worst shit, but let's get let's get started. He was a conservative on air personality whose bombastic presence made his radio show one of the most popular in history. Literally. He said a number of things that people didn't say on the airwaves, but might have said in the dark of night in the privacy of their homes. Bitch, what the fuck kind of people are you talking about, by the way? I mean, I know he's right, but like, I don't know a single fucking person that says shit like uh, what Rush Limbaugh says. And I'm pretty fucking grateful for it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest with you. I know that there are a lot of uh, people that have racist ass family members and shit, but like, my God, I mean, luckily I don't know anyone that uh, would ever fucking parrot a Rush Limbaugh talking point. Holy to shit. Talk is cheap. And that's what Rush Limbaugh really brings to the airwaves. Uh, a three hour talk radio program in which it's basically him talking into a microphone. At a time when you get news and sound bites and everything is prepackaged and everything is supposed place, to be like place, a certain place, way, place, 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 Rush Limbaugh place, place, was place, place, doing three hour broadcasts where he was just going balls to the fucking wall at a time when like he was saying shit that they wouldn't even say on Fox notice, News, notice, okay? Notice, notice, That's what it is. Notice, so anytime notice, you hear notice, about Rush Limbaugh notice, notice, going notice, forward notice, to this day, notice, uh, notice. and you're probably going to hear a lot about him and then no one's going to remember him because he's a fucking loser piece of shit who gives a fuck. When, whenever people say like Rush Limbaugh was really balls to the wall or Rush Limbaugh really was unhinged or whatever, they mean like if there is a racism dial and, you know, those at the fucking racism factory, aka Fox News are like, cranking it up the homophobia racism sexism dial they're cranking it up like rush limbaugh was like yeah fuck this dial and like broke it okay and just fucking broke it and threw it to the ground he once said michael j fox was exaggerating his parkinson's disease oh they're going with the baby stuff like it's it's funny because it's like dude like why michael j fox by the way for people who are saying yikes no this is baby stuff just wait dude just fucking wait okay do you understand I'm not saying, I'm not minimizing the, the ridiculous ableism of like shitting on someone as, as harmless as fucking, uh, Michael J. Fox, but you will get a better understanding of what I mean when you start hearing, uh, some of the other stuff that he says about black people and, and just wait. Okay. He pushed the baseless birther conspiracy theory about Barack Obama. He made race related comments about then Philadelphia. Eagles. Yeah. Yeah. No, this is the baby stuff. Yeah. By the I way, it's so devastating that in American politics, when someone talks about birtherism, you're like, oh, the viable political moment within the Republican party that ended up creating a fucking president. This notion that like uh, Barack Obama wasn't a real American because he's black and like we need to get his fucking birth certificate is now so commonplace that the president was a fucking birther conspiracist. Like, just remember that, okay? And uh, if, if that saddens you, then you will maybe understand a little bit better why I'm so happy with Rush Limbaugh's uh, passing because he is literally responsible for that. In 2015, Limbaugh attacked Georgetown University law student Sandra Fluke. Congressional Democrats had invited her to speak in support of contraceptive coverage mandates for health insurance companies. Like, remember, there was a time, and, and this is perhaps one of the greater examples of why, like, conservatism is so fucking fleeting and they don't legitimately care about the shit that they talk about. And uh, they all they care about is, like, the actual undesirable outcomes for their enemies which is why it's inherently reactionary. 
they moved on from the contraceptive, contraceptive shit. For the most part, like, people don't fucking make that big of a deal of contraceptives. They talk about abortion. Why? Because it was never about fucking abortion, or it was never about contraceptives in general, and it was always about punishing women for fucking, okay? Allowing women to, to uh, have autonomy over their own bodies. That's what it was always about. And if you're one of those fucking morons who's like, no, actually, it's about the sanctity of life, shut the fuck up. There is nothing that, that, that shows that you give, sing, you give no fucking shit about the sanctity of life than to say, women are not allowed to do certain things. Okay, punishing women for uh, regular uh, bodily functions. Limbaugh degraded her on his show. It makes her a slut, right? It makes her a prostitute. She wants to be paid to have sex. Republicans and Democrats condemned his comments. It's funny because, like, they're saying Republicans and Democrats, yeah, like, you know, they all love him. They all loved him back then. Not the Democrats, but, like, Republicans all loved him back then. They still love him. They uh, are probably, I, and I'm I, like, these articles will write themselves in the next days, like in the coming days, like so much for the tolerant left. I'll probably even appear in some of these fucking clip compilations out there where people are like, look at, le you know, Antifa fucking socialist fascist uh, commentator Hasanabi on Twitch, you know, getting excited, salivating at the mouth of like, you know, uh, conservative commentator Rush Limbaugh's death. Like the left is so violent. They're so vile. They're so full of hatred. Tucker Carlson is going to dedicate 25 minutes to his, uh, to, to exactly this tonight, singling out every single psychotic, uh, fucking take that he sees on the timeline of people celebrating the death of, uh, Rush Limbaugh. Trump surprised Limbaugh at his 2020 State of the Union address and awarded him the Medal of Freedom, the highest civilian honor. But can you imagine? There's nothing that says that these are, these medals are just fucking garbage. They're just, like, pieces of cheap metal that uh, you strap onto the fucking chests of uh, whoever the fuck, then giving one to Rush Limbaugh. I I'm sorry. It's just so meaningless after that. It it's over. It's like giving a Nobel Peace Prize to Barack Obama, okay? Uh, that's what it is. In 2001, he went deaf from an autoimmune disease, and for months, he continued on air with the help of his staff and a teleprompter. Thank God people kept him going so he could, you know, on his literal fucking deathbed, continue to spew absolute fucking bile, okay? Just absolute bile. Like, this is one of those dudes who just worked every single day of his life to make the world a worse fucking place. This is not a matter of simple disagreements, okay? It's not a matter of like, oh, well, he had a different point of view than you, and that's why you feel that way. Like, no, this is the kind of dude who very clearly, like in every single fucking moment that he was live and broadcasting, you could very easily understand what kind of fucking dude he was and what he was working to make the world uh, look like. Uh, his vision of the world is a devastating place, and unfortunately, we're closer and closer to that vision of the world every single fucking day because America keeps going further and further down this fascist fucking uh, rabbit hole. Russia was a vile monster, and no, I do not have any feelings for him. I do not care. I'm sick and tired of people also, like, uh, you know, uh, propping up these sorts of figureheads as though they were so, so nice and so normal. Like, this normalization of, like, horrific monsters like Rush Limbaugh and George W. Bush and Dick Cheney and all these other fucking people is really bad in the long run because we should accurately assess the horrifying things that they did, uh, even in death. When I shit on someone, it's not because I disagree with them. More often than not, I tell you, I, I, I will even push back on people who think like, you know, Nazis don't deserve fucking healthcare and shit like that. No, I, I think they do. I literally tell you, if you are a regular person who is confused or uh, or or uh, a victim of uh, brainwashing from uh, conservative media and 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 all that sort of stuff like you there is still a pathway to salvation okay there's a pathway to redemption you can turn your fucking life around in every way you can become a better person i will always believe in that and i will always fight for you but there are professional conservatives out there who are literally churning uh and and, and trying to make more people exactly like them and make money while doing it. And those people, they're not going to get fucking saved. There is no saving them. They've already decided, like they know better and they've decided, no, this is what I'm going to do. So always understand, like when I shit on people like Rush Limbaugh, I shit on them because their impact is far more devastating than the random conservative. Even if that random fucking conservative is Gina Carano or whatever the fuck her name is, and she herself is an actress who will now get to that stage now that she's working with Ben Shabibo, but before she started working with Ben Shabibo was probably yet another fucking dumbass Hollywood actress who thought, you know, they hate conservatives and, uh, and, and that's why, you know, this is just like the Holocaust. She was a dumbass conservative and now she's slowly but surely going to move into the professional conservative grifter uh, category, which will make me a lot less uh, tolerant to her bullshit.
He told his listeners about his lung cancer in February 2020. I'm surprised that he believes that, like, you know, cancer is real. Well, I guess it's kind of like uh, how Rush Limbaugh consistently used to say climate change is fake, you know, conspiracy, hoax, whatever. And uh, I remember a couple years back, there was a fucking hurricane that was about to hit Florida. And I remember Rush Limbaugh literally saying like, no, 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 it's fake. It's not a real hurricane. It's a psyop, whatever. And then they caught him at the fucking state line. Like, I think he got pulled over when he was literally evading, when he was driving away from the hurricane after telling he, millions of his fucking, millions of his fans that it wasn't a real fucking hurricane that was going to occur. So that goes to show you, like, this is Rush Limbaugh through and through. Do you understand? To be fair, he would do a charity, the Leukemia and Lymphoma Foundation, every year and donate over 300k at a minimum. Oh, dude, never mind then. Oh, fuck. No, no, no. Then it's fine. I, I, I didn't realize that uh, as long as you donate to charities, like, it's like, dude, delayed autistic guppy, are you Catholic by any chance? Because that is the most Catholic fucking thing I've ever heard in my entire life. No disrespect to the fucking Catholics, but holy shit dude it's like oh no 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 he he literally donated to erase the other stuff charity equals automatic uh it, just uh, erasure of uh, past crimes and wrongdoings anyway why are they putting sappy music because they're pussies dude that's why what do i what do i always tell you dude once you hit a certain point and your position is normalized uh in, in a really fucked up country like the united states of america where like rush limbaugh's takes literally became president you know what i mean if if you could take all of the things that Rush Limbaugh has said and put it into an artificial intelligence machine, it would be Donald Trump. So in that universe, when he gets that kind of uh, mainstream recognition and legitimacy, he now has institutional legitimacy. So in his death, of course, they're going to remember him uh, by, by normalizing his experience and normalizing his words and rhetoric without uh, doing a full account of how devastating it was and how, how much it might have even changed people's uh, point of view. How is this vision of the world coming to fruition? Do you realize Republicans are losing all their strongholds? Arizona, Georgia, Texas, where once the bastion of conservatism, gay marriage is normalized, feminism is questioned on grata, etc. So I disagree. Can you explain this more? Yeah, because your fucking worldview revolves around a narrow fucking frame of like acceptability. That's why it's preposterous to assume that Rush Limbaugh's greater vision for conservative control is not happening at a time when there is uh, a, a supermajority of conservative Supreme Court justices, when lower courts are slammed to the fucking, packed to the fucking gills with conservative Federalist Society judges, when Congress's power has been effectively uh, neutered by Mitch McConnell, when Republicans end up winning elections regardless of what the percentage uh, uh, what the margin of victory is for the Democrats uh, when Republicans control legislatures all around the fucking country where democracy, which was always a theory and never something that we truly practice, but like is, is slipping further and further away from us. You think that conservatives aren't fucking winning? Donald Trump was the fucking president, dog. He put forward tax cuts for the wealthy and corporations that are nearly Reagan era. Reagan's effect was devastating for the country. Uh, you are seeing some of the examples of or you are seeing some of the devastating outcomes right now uh, of deregulation and of said tax cuts, of uh, uh, devastating income inequality and wealth inequality in this country. Just imagine what the world is going to look like in a post-Trump universe, what America is going to look like in a post-Trump universe. Where that, that shit's going to come back in like the next, you know, five, six, ten years. We'll have this conversation again. We'll revisit it again in the next uh, decade. Considering that, like, um, you know, Rush Limbaugh lost because, uh, you know, gay marriage is legal is uh, some silly bitch shit. It means that you have kept your eyes off the fucking prize for uh, a very long time. These people play uh, back and forth and musical chairs with, uh, with culture war issues, cultural grievances, wedge issues that Newt Gingrich, for example, another fucking demon... Uh, is is uh, partially responsible for exclusively so you do not focus on the real, the much more consequential material problems that you still need to address, even if you address homophobia. Because, yeah, gay people can get married and it's normalized and that's a good thing. And, you know, the less gay people get kicked out of their fucking homes for, for being gay, the better. It's better for America. That's better for everyone. And then certainly better for the gay people. But they still need fucking health care. OK, they still need shelter. They still need uh, a, a base level of material equality. And those things, they're not getting solved anytime soon. Rush Limbaugh's Folks, every there's, racist there's moment. A, there's actually a debate going on on ESPN and throughout the sports world over who can use the N word when and how and who can't when and how. 
a little history lesson for you. If any race of people should not have guilt about slavery, it's Caucasians. The white race has probably had fewer slaves and for a briefer period of time than any other in the history of the world. No other race has ever fought a war for the purpose of ending slavery, which we did. There's some good stuff in there, folks. Listening to him right now on this broadcast is going to allow you to be closer to your fucking grandparents than ever before. Like, you now will understand why your fucking grandparents are the way that they are. Like, you probably were wondering, like, how the fuck did they get so racist? Like, why are we so different than one another? This is part of it. A big part of it, actually. It's preposterous that Caucasians are blamed for slavery when they've done more to end it than any other race. This argument is my favorite type of argument that you hear all the time. It's like the playground bully. I'm going to simplify it. I'm not I'm not reducing slavery to this or the Civil War to this. But it's like when the playground bully fucking beats the shit out of you and then stops beating the shit out of you and says, why don't you celebrate me for, you know, stopping beating the shit out of you? Uh, look at how much... Uh, Look how I'm exercising control here, you know? That's uh, that's one uh, ass whooping that I saved you from. Well, motherfucker, you're the one who did the ass whooping. Like, what are you doing? It's preposterous that Caucasians are blamed for slavery when they've done more to end it than any other race. Wait, I'm confused. So, um, so the Civil War was fought over slavery then, huh? Because if you ask Rush in a different moment, he'll say, no, it's uh, states' rights, not slavery, states' rights. Okay, so, so the Caucasians didn't fight to end slavery then. Are you saying... That the North was in the wrong for fighting against states' rights then? If no slavery is involved in the equation, then, then where are you really? Sea of contradictions, baby, always. Why does putting Condoleezza Rice front and center at the convention not work? Why does putting Marco Rubio front and center at the convention not work? Because Republicans are racist. And he's like, he's just like, just lean into the racism. Like, what are you doing? What is this like fake bullshit? What are you, the fucking Democratic Party? Making it seem like, uh, you know, we put a couple people with uh, with a different skin complexion or a different background. And all of a sudden, like, people are going to fucking start voting for us. Like, it doesn't work that way. So, with an A on the end. <laughs> well, I think I can now. Isn't that the point? Because it's not racist. That's the point. I could be talking about a male. I could be t a Chinese male, a guy at the laundromat. I could be talking about a man. That's what she said it means. Because it's not racist. Because it's not racist. <laughs> Yo. Yo, he just dropped that, dude. I was not expecting that. That was that was wild. Um, Guys, he said it's not racist, so. How many Native Americans, how many Indians were killed by the arrival of the white man through disease and war? And how many people have died since the white man arrived here due to lung cancer thanks to the Indian invented custom of smoking tobacco? Who are the real killers here? Where are our reparations? What, dude? Yo, I had never heard of that. Fuck, yo, this guy's got some good points. <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh yeah lung cancer wouldn't that be fucking crazy i guess the native americans uh you know hey the native americans want to have a war with you <laughs> here's a fucking reparations bitch i don't know why the native americans are italian well i guess they're poc italians are poc you know you know what it is now what are the similarities between the democrat party of today and the nazi party well the nazis were against big business and of course we all know that they were opposed to jewish capitalism they were insanely irrationally against pollution they were for two years mandatory voluntary service to germany they had a whole bunch of make work projects to keep people working one of which okay this is literally straight the fuck up Nazi rhetoric. This is how you deny the Holocaust, okay? That's the difference between someone like Rush Limbaugh, who probably doesn't deny the Holocaust, but uh, is doing like literal fucking Holocaust denial shit, make work programs. Like, uh, like as though they were legitimate make work programs. Nazis were socialists, even though they fucking killed uh, socialists or, or, or uh, threw them in fucking concentration camps first. Uh, or that they were against... Jewish capitalism. What the fuck is Jewish capitalism, dude? Um, you put your kids on a school bus, you expect you expect safety, but in Obama's America, the white kids now get beat up with the black kids cheering. Yeah, right on, right on, right on. Right on. Wow, that was so convincing. That black person impersonation was so convincing. I for a second thought, wow, how did Rush Limbaugh find a black person to to sound out that part? 
I hope you're understanding a little bit further why, uh, you know, I feel the way that I do. But I know what they think they're up against. They got the first black president, uh, independence. It's easy to go after Newt or Romney because they're conservatives and everybody hates conservatives anyway. But we can't go after poor old Barack that way because he's a minority. A, a lot of the takes that you're hearing right now are are like the first drafts of the same recycled garbage that you hear all the time. Actually, white people are the real victims here because, you know, blacks can uh, use their minority status to get ahead, stuff like that. Like this, this has been, uh, this is, of course, a, a, a conservative talking point that they have unironically conserved and recycled uh, over and over again in different formats. So that's, that's what they're, that's why it's so familiar. That's why I always say like, you hear one fucking think tank, a uh, dipshit, you hear all of the conservative talking points. You hear one conservative talk in a, in a, in a comment or in a forum somewhere, you hear all the talking points because they basically have a pipeline where the information gets churned out so effectively through the conservative uh, uh, media apparatus directly into the mouths of these uh, this human centipede uh, of, of conservative talking points. And it's always the same and it's always been the fucking same. Day. Day mocking the standard. Who dat? Who dat say day mocking the standard? Al Sharpton say day mocking the standard. Wow. Incredibly convincing. Again, if I close my eyes, I just assume, you know, this guy is mentally ill. <laughs> no, 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 my friend. He's literally just racist, LMAO. Ah, uh, ding, 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 ding. There you go, my friend. There you go. If you have money, you're going to get health care. If you don't have money, it's more difficult. If you have money, you're going to get a house on the beach. If you don't have money, you're going to live in a bungalow somewhere. Right. That's that's right. But we're talking about health care. What's make what's the difference? The difference is we're talking about health care, no. not a house oh. and a bungalow. You're assuming that there's some morally superior aspect to health care. Again, so fucking close, but because uh, it's Shatner, right? Because he's a fucking liberal, he can't counter and be like, there is no difference. Shelter is also a fucking human right, you dumb fuck. And that's precisely why we should have public housing. You get stunlocked into being like, uh, 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 it's different. It's different because it's healthcare. No, both literally are subject to inelastic demand. You need healthcare and you need shelter. These are essential human needs that you have for survival. If we were to eliminate that need, if we were to have that taken care of, we would be a more productive society. There is even a neoliberal argument to make for, uh, and an and, and a, uh, Econ 101 argument to make for both shelter and also healthcare being uh, completely publicly funded. Russia is by far the most articulate defining voice of conservatism in America today. The most articulate voice of Reagan conservatism in the country. Russia is a powerful See? voice. I would that's honest. That is true. He is. He absolutely is. And that's why I get extra triggered when Democrats turn around and do this fucking historical revisionism and act as though Rush Limbaugh and Donald Trump and Ronald Reagan aren't directly on that same exact fucking pipeline. You understand? When Democrats turn around and lie to you and say, why can't we have good conservatism like Ronald Reagan? Remember that they are lying to you. Okay, either they are delusional and think that the Ronald Reagan era conservatism is entirely different than what Rush Limbaugh espouses or espoused. Either they're delusional or they are purposely fucking lying to you. Okay, it's the same shit. You immigrate to our country, you have to speak the native language. You have to be a professional or an investor. No unskilled workers allowed. Also, there'll be no special bilingual programs in the schools with the limbo laws. No special ballots for elections. No government business will be conducted in your language. Wait, so so you don't want people to like integrate then? Like what a what a dumb take. It's like you. You don't want people coming in uh, that uh, that that like don't know English already. Like, what a fucking idiotic take! Like, bilingual language classes are a necessity for integration. Like, if you want immigration, and Rush here claims that he wants immigration, what he does, and he, all he's saying here is like, we want white immigration. Okay, that's it. We want rich white people coming in here. We don't want no fucking Mexicans coming over the border. That's what he's basically saying, in in uh, uh, such few words in such an eloquent way because he is the leader of uh, the uh, the Republican Party and their uh, rhetoric. Foreigners will not have the right to vote or hold political office. If you're in our country, you cannot be a burden to taxpayers. You are not entitled to welfare. Or Ironic considering the fact that uh, undocumented immigrants are literally less of a tax burden than natural born U.S. citizens. So that's another, uh, another uh, incredible take. But, uh, you know, 
What do I know? And another thing. You don't have the right to protest. You're allowed no demonstrations, no foreign flag waving, no political organizing, no bad mouthing our president. Literally un American. But in some ways, the most American take is to tell people that they do not have the fundamental, most, some would say, most important right offered to you by the Constitution, your most important freedom, uh, robbing that of those who come here after you. In a nation that is built, and some might even correctly point out, stolen by immigrants, it is uh, rather ironic for him to turn around and be like, yeah, we were here, we immigrated here, we stole this land, we robbed the people, we killed the people, so now this is our land, so if you come after us, uh, even if you come with the insane fucking conditions that I've put forward, I'm just not going to give you the same fucking rights. You're going to be second, you're going to be reduced to second class citizenship always. Rush Limbaugh mocking liberals and how he said they view the concept of consent. You know what the magic word, the only thing that matters in American sexual mores today is? One thing, the conservative commentator said, according to audio released by Media Matters for America, you can do anything. The level promote. <clears throat> the level promote, I understand that and tolerate anything as long as there's one element. You know what it is? Consent. If there is consent on both or all three or all four, however many are involved in the sex act, it's perfectly fine. Whatever it is. But if the left ever senses and smells that there's no consent in part of the equation, then here come the rape police. But consent is the magic key to the left. Wow, based. Um, he's right. Of course, he didn't think, uh, like, he, he was making the correct point while thinking he was uh, making an incorrect point, which is, you know, uh, really additionally ironic and hilarious. How was that bad? No, he's right. The problem is, it's, it's, it's an instance where he's accidentally a leftist. Do you understand? He is trying to say, this is ridiculous. Like, Four people shouldn't be able to fuck one another. Like, that's gross and, and inhumane. Like, no one should have group sex. But liberals will tolerate that sort of thing as long as there's fucking consent. And uh, also, consent in and of itself is a ridiculous concept too. And uh, otherwise, you know, if there is no consent, all of a sudden the rape police comes in. Yeah, rape police. As in, like, you know, theoretically what the actual police should be doing. Uh, which is, yes, in, in an instance where there's no consent, i.e. rape police that situation that's literally what they are supposed to do anyway president trump are you with me i am and it was a great honor to do so fuck i miss his i missed his voice so much fuck dude you know i i i hate to see him go but i love to watch him leave you know shit dude he's back oh oh thank god thank god especially half the room half the room went crazy the other half the room they knew uh, they knew he should get it but it was special and he was special mr president he was you know, special sure. but he was a fantastic man a fantastic talent and uh, people whether they loved him or not they respected him they really did absolutely not and no one should fuck rush limbaugh and what you learned that he was listen out of the four wives that he had this one got the luckiest this one was the luckiest all right come on She's the one, she's the one who, uh, who, who hit the fucking jackpot. One of them was supposed to, eventually. So good on her. Much respect. Women Called a payday, baby. $500 million. Like, and his net worth in 2016 was $500 million. For those of you who said no shot, I do not think you understand how powerful this Nazi fuck was. Please, I beg you, this person's reach is profound. You do not fucking understand. Just because you have never heard of Rush Limbaugh or just because like you were sheltered and uh, luckily or you just, uh, you know, uh, are, are uh, not white and you or your family members had never uh, been subjected to Rush Limbaugh's bile doesn't mean that like a big chunk of American conservatism uh, revolved around uh, and, and hung off, uh, hung around every word that he had to say. It was a unique guy, and he was a, a, he became a friend of mine. You know, I didn't know Rush at all. I had essentially never met Rush. And then when we came down the escalator, he liked my rather controversial speech. I made that speech that was a little bit on the controversial side, and he loved it. He was with me right from the beginning, and he liked what I said. First of all, I don't even think that that's true. I'm pretty sure that he wasn't like a Trump advocate until after it was clear that he was, uh, you know, destroying uh destroying in the primaries and uh it doesn't matter because like you know he jumped on the trump train he's like charlie kirk these guys read the room they recognize like oh fuck never mind 
The Republican Party is not going to be like Ted Cruz is not going to give us the juice. We know that it was a failure because Mitt Romney wasn't conservative enough. So Ted Cruz is not going to give us the uh, the the fucking straight mainline uh, racism that we need. And Trump is giving us that. So, um, you know, we're going to back him. But before that point, if you look at Charlie Kirk and what he used to say on Fox News or you can look at Rush Limbaugh, and all, you look at fucking Lindsey Graham and all these other people, um, they were all uh, anti-Trump until he won. Well, I got a call from a friend of mine who was a big Rush fan, and he said, Rush loves you. I said, I don't see that. You know, I hadn't heard. I'm not able to listen to the radio during the afternoon too much. You're on the trail. And it's literally because he is a visual learner, okay? So I was like, yeah, I don't listen to the radio because uh, I'm more of a Fox News guy. Does he have something I can watch? Like, uh, like does he have a TV show? That's the only reason why he wasn't a big-time Rush fan. It's because there aren't like, uh, you know, sexy ladies to watch, uh, sexy blonde ladies uh, to watch on the television or, you know, fucking Sean Hannity. You don't strike me as his kind of guy back then. What changed? Well, I don't know. You know, you never know about people. I like some people that nobody would think. I think I, I, think I have some ideas. I, I got some ideas because five years ago, Donald Trump decided to run for president and literally adopted everything that Rush Limbaugh is saying as his platform. I think that was... Uh, that was when Rush became a, a, a Trump guy. I, I have a, a, a very beautiful weakness. I always seem to like people that like me, okay? You know, it's much easier. When they don't like me, I tend not to <laughs> go for them so much. Yeah. Again, it was very early because, you know, that famous escalator ride was the very beginning. And he was one of the yes. people that said we were going to win. He thought we were going to win. I think one of the best parts about a uh, moving tribute to Rush Limbaugh, who fucking died... Uh, uh, being 11 minutes long on Fox News is Donald Trump just talking about himself the entire time. Like, not only did we not talk about Rush Limbaugh, which, you know, which is, of course, why the fuck would we? He even admitted that he doesn't fucking know him at all. And, and even talked about how he wasn't even a fucking fan of him or, uh, you know, Rush might not have been a fan of his. But, uh, you know, I like him because he likes me. I like guys that like me, you know. I'm, uh, I got that good quality, which is fucking awesome just it is what he deserves but but he thought we we're gonna win uh he just had an incredible instinct for politics it's, it's so great donald trump is such a fucking narcissist that he is physically incapable he is physically incapable of like remembering someone without making it about himself we, we, like it's it's hard for him to be like here are some good things that this person did now Rush Limbaugh didn't do a lot of good things. He just did mostly bad things. But uh, in Trump's worldview, he should be able to at least find some stuff. I mean, delayed autistic guppy in my chat did a better job of like trying to show a redeeming side of Rush Limbaugh by saying he donated $300,000 every year to lymphoma research. We got motherfuckers in here doing a better job remembering Rush Limbaugh's uh, 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 positives. Okay, if there were, uh, if there was ever such a thing. Then Donald fucking Trump, who's like, hey, I like him because he liked me. I went down the escalator. Remember, the escalator was gold. How good was that? Hillary Clinton, what about her emails? Come on, I'm running for 2024. We're going to, we're, we're, we're uh, hitting the final chapter of uh, Rush Limbo's uh, pathetic and horrific fucking monstrous experience of a life. Uh, and uh, the last thing I'm going to say is for people who are uh, really sad, uh, that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm being a sad, sad man by, uh, celebrating, uh, this, this moment. Yeah, I know I was gonna fucking do it for 20 minutes and it's like two hours and I'm still talking about this because, like, come on, he was a legendary, iconic piece of shit, okay? I mean, sorry. Like, again, I, I repeat myself often, uh, during this segment, but this motherfucker is, like, part of the reason, or was, part of the re fucking reason that your grandparents are so racist, Okay. Uh, here, yeah, here's a threat of Rush Limbaugh being shitty about the deaths of other people. Uh, he said, what about Robin Williams? Rush Limbaugh says Robin Williams killed himself because leftists are never happy. Rush Limbaugh, we're supposed to feel sorry for Biden because his wife and children died. Rush Limbaugh says Trayvon Martin's murderer, uh, just got a little overzealous. U.S. conservative talk radio, little fondness, uh, for, uh, the Kennedy legacy. Oh, he said this about Kurt Cobain. Kurt Cobain was, ladies and gentlemen, I just, he was a worthless shred of human debris. He mocked people dying of AIDS. Here it is. Uh, he used to do an AIDS update. Limbaugh's career on radio began when he was in high school in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, where he was a rock and roll disc jockey. After high school, he attended college for one year and then quit. He became a radio DJ again and was fired from two stations in Pittsburgh and two in Kansas City. 
His career floundered until he became the replacement talk show host for Morton Downey in Sacramento in 1984. There he garnered a following with outrageous programming that included such features as celebratory moments when another AIDS victim died, which he called AIDS updates. As offensive as these tactics seemed, his popularity at the time of the decline of radio in general was exceptional. In fact, some credit radio talk shows like his with saving AM radio. So, uh, you know, we, we already went through all of his, uh, really, we went through some of it. Like, it, it's impossible to get all of his fucking controversial takes. Uh, in two hours, we would have to do, like, an 11-hour an, an show. Oh, he began airing Barack the Magic Negro, a racist parody song about the then-Senator Barack Obama's popularity with many white voters in 2007. I think we forgot to mention that. Oh, yeah. How do I describe this? It's like Rush Limbaugh is, is, um, is, 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 is like a, is like an onion. There, the more layers you peel, the more stinky it gets. I, I, I thought we had covered most of the shit in the past two hours. Turns out, I was wrong. Uh, there are important parts of his, uh, of his incredible uh, history and broadcasting that we had forgotten. In John K. Wilson's book, The Most Dangerous Man in America, Rush Limbaugh's Assault on Reason, the host was quoted as saying this homophobic statement, when a gay person turns his back on you, it is anything but an insult. It's an invitation. Okay. In his Undeniable Truths, written as part of an article for the Sacramento Union in 1988, Limbaugh wrote, Feminism was established so as to allow unattractive women access to the mainstream of society. In a later updated version, he wrote, The Earth's ecosystem is not fragile. Women should not be allowed on juries where the accused is a stud. The Los Angeles riots were not caused by Rodney King verdict. The Los Angeles riots were caused by rioters. So different than, uh, you know, contemporary conservative takes. Ha. <laughs> So different. On the Rush Limbaugh show in 2004, he said, I think it's time to get rid of this whole NBA, the National Basketball Association. Call it the TBA, the Thug Basketball Association, and stop calling them teams. Call them gangs. He later on repeated that with the NFL uh, and uh, famously said that, uh, you know, NFL games look like uh, just uh, bloods and crips uh, fighting amongst one another without guns. Um, I wonder why he said those things. By the way, conservatism very edgy remember this is like you know 16 year olds on the fucking internet on 4chan in 2016 were literally repeating rush limbaugh takes from 2004 thinking that they were saying some edgy shit which is why it's inherently rea like reactionary movements can never be fucking new age or never be disruptive or against the uh the the against what is the mainstream agenda okay that's why conservatism will never be fucking punk rock because all you're doing on 4chan is repeating shit that your fucking grandfather said while thinking that you're doing some cutting edge new shit. I guess the only difference is like you call yourself and others autistic. That's the only new thing because your grandfather didn't know what the fuck that meant. W what is this quote? Ching cha, ching chang cho cha. Why did you put this as a quote? <laughs> what is this? This guy got a medal, dude. This guy literally got a medal. <laughs> Imagine transcribing this and being like, one of his most famous quotes was ching cha. Ching Chang Cho Chow. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. Um, yeah, write that down. Uh, once again, th from this entire two-hour segment, you could literally just uh, do an entire Hasanabi out-of-context clip.